are these people? Um, how do you feel about U2, Yeti? The band. The... Don't give a shit. Okay, that's a good answer. Um, you know, I have a few Irish buddies that, like, were really into them for a while. Um, I mean, but... some of their songs are decent, but... Yeah. Other than that... Um, I mean, especially if it goes directly onto your Apple device without you asking, something like that. Yeah, that, yeah, that should have been a real tip off to people that that is not the most secure phones. No, no. Um, I see Anthony Malenko hey, just your got phone here. And downloaded shit for you. Um, what's up, cat? No, thank you. Yeah, pretty much. And like, it's always, it's now it's on there forever. Some people still have that autoplay. You know, but anyway, this is um a st- uh, uh, a story over at Mint Press News with Alan McLeod. Um, you ever read Alan's stuff? Um, uh, no, I don't believe so. You you should if you haven't, because his stuff is generally. I know Indy covered uh something of his in that Breaking Points article too. Um, okay. Like old stuff from McLeod. Like he's he's pretty consistently decent in my opinion. Um, I gotta catch up on my reading stuff to be honest. Yeah, me too. Indy's way better at that than I am. Indy's got like savant knowledge in in when regards to like writers and editors and all that stuff. So um, that's good. But this is Alan McLeod, and he just wants to um. So he, he's talking about Bono essentially, and like Bono's yeah. quote unquote activism, yeah. right? Serves the powerful. Um. You know, and I think I think a lot of people knew just through like their own feeling that Bono was a dirtbag and a fucking idiot. Like South Park's Bono episode clearly showed, like <laughs> you know how you could easily parody him. Um, but yeah, it, anybody that seems to get that notoriety seems to have a few screws loose. Well, he's always had a bit of a fucking holier than now you know thing about him right yeah like it was kind of like him and madonna were kind of the like lead go-to's as far as like who were just doing these acts of niceties for their image you know but alan mcleod um goes on to talk bono presents himself as a radical activist ruffling feathers and standing up for the world's oppressed in reality he has not done or said anything in the decades that discomforts the political and economic rulers of the world which is precisely why he is consistently invited into the halls of power so dublin bono is again in the news for his political activism at the behest of ukraine's president volodymyr Zelensky. The Irish rock star and frontman of U2 traveled to Kiev where he pl- performed a few songs with Ukrainian soldiers inside the, I'm sure you could do this better than I can, um, Kreshkitek. Kreshkitek? Yeah, something like that here. Let me make it a little bigger for you. There you go. Um, so, yeah. Kreshkitek. Something like that. Um, Once again, I apologize to offending all countries that I offended by that pronunciation. Yes. Um, Metro station to a crowd of around 100 people, most of whom were journalists. After the concert was over, Bono, Bono addressed the Ukrainian people through the media, stating, Your president leads the world in the cause of freedom right now. The people of Ukraine are not just fighting for your own freedom. You're fighting for all of us who love freedom, while also calling for regime change in Russia. I should really be breaking out my bono impression but um, that's really gonna suck for people that call for regime change if uh this never goes to war world war yeah oh yeah you ma- yeah. you imagine russia oh we remember what you said yeah we got gulag for you pretty much pretty much i mean i i, I think people don't understand mainly um but this is you'll fucking love this and jesse jet we need to do something with this because why shouldn't you? Um, so I'll make sure that he gets this and works it into another hit single from him. So earlier, earlier, uh, Bozo, I mean, Bono sent us house speaker, Nancy Pelosi, the following poem in which he anointed Zelensky, a living saint. Pelosi read it out at an Eve event celebrating St. Patrick's day. Right? So, um 
So you could either do this in Pelosi's voice or St. Pat, like, or Bono, you know, either one. So with his prayers, uh, so, oh, St. Patrick, he drove out the snakes with his prayers, but that's not all it takes. For the snake symbolizes an evil that rises and hides in your heart as it breaks. And the evil has risen, my friends, from the darkness that lives in some men, but in sorrow and fear. That's when saints can appear to drive out those old snakes once again. And they struggle for us to be free from the psycho in this human family. Ireland's sorrow and pain is now the Ukraine and St. Patrick's name now. Zelensky. Um, like crap poem just on the basis of poems. Poems? Like, I mean, I feel like somebody's got to like some English teacher you know, maybe Steph, I think you were one of those once, correct? You know, want to break this down for like, get the red ink out once again, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but like, especially here, like, come on, like the once again, like you're, where are you rhyming again with? Drive out snakes once, it, so it's got to be like, some men, you're rhyming men with again. Like, that's a real fucking sketchy rhyme there, guy. I'm just saying. Like, what do they call that? He writes songs for a living, doesn't like he? An, <laughs> like, an almost, like an almost rhyme? What are those? Like, uh, Jesse's probably screaming it right now. Um, but his work was not well received, being described as unhinged, a particularly kind of awful, and literally the worst poem ever written in the media. His recent activism has also failed to impress Dr. Harry Brown of Technological University Dublin, an author of the book The Frontman Bono in the Name of Power. So this guy wrote a book about you, Bono. And he said it's shit. Like, I mean, that's like your dad saying we can't put your crap up on the refrigerator. It's terrible. You know, so um, Wait, Brown's parents didn't do that. Shit. I mean, you know, it's going um, in the bin, right? <laughs> Just you. What do you? What did you have? Like fucking Simon Cowell for a father? Like Ugh. you know? Um, I guess Zelensky is just old enough to remember when you two were cool. And certainly old enough to remember Bono as a key public figure in global decision making on humanitarian policy. Dr. Brown told Mint Press, adding, My impression is that the event didn't play all that well globally. In general, it seems like Bono's ship has perhaps sailed. He's no longer a useful or even credible image of the West, West's best intentions. This, however, is far from the first time the 62 year old Dublin native has publicly chosen sides and wars. In 2016, for instance, he accepted Turkish Prime Minister Ahmad Davu Jesus Ahmad Davu Tauglus, um offer to join him on a much publicized visit to a camp for Syrian refugees near the Tur Turkey Syria border. Bono extolled uh, the Turkish people's generosity, adding that Turkey's response to the Syrian civil war was a lesson for the world. The message was un undermined somewhat as barely two weeks later, Turkey invaded and occupied Syria and has not left since. Uh, do you know the other, um, like, you know what they they also call Turkey? Um, the land of Sherbert and Sodomy. That was Lord Byron gave it that. Um, like, and he 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 particularly liked Turkey, Lord Byron. Um, Lord Byron, notorious, uh, you know, classically bisexual Byron. Um, so he wrote plenty about the men in Turkey for sure. Um, yeah. but so, uh, McLeod continues, um, since his first major foray in Activision at the 1984 Live Aid, um, which much of the money raised reportedly went to buy weapons for the Ethiopian military. I didn't even know that. Um, oh, I was going to say, I never knew that, but now I'm. Fucking hate live. Right. Yeah. Now, now that's like, damn. Come on, man. Freddie Mercury, bro. What were you doing? Um. So Bono, probably Coke. 
Um, Bono has become an almost ubiquitous face in the halls of power, being invited to speak at a host of elite events on poverty, including the Munich Security Conference, the G8 Summit, the World Bank, and would you like to read that one, Yeti? The uh, last one the in The World there. Economic Forum. There you go. So there he is, usually treated as the voice of Africa and an intellectual and moral powerhouse helping to solve the world's most pressing humanitarian problems. So, yeah. I got, I got a way to solve that problem. Stop facilitating war, you warmongering. That would be Ask. nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, do you think the Edge has talked to him about this? Like, be like, come on. Come on, Bono. Like, fucking no. <laughs> like, fucking, we're trying to make music here. Um... Have you ever seen The Edge's house, by the way? He literally has a no. house like in the middle of the Irish Channel. I don't even know who The Edge is. The, the guitarist for you 2 Oh. Um, yeah. See, I'm a huge fan. The one with talent. Um, oh. You know, Bono definitely just sits in front of a mic. Um, there's multiple people that could be Bono. Um, so, yeah, I critics... I not one of them. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Um, yet critics would say, far from helping the poor and challenging power, he has instead bolstered it. As Brown wrote, Bono has been more often than not amplifying elite discourses, advocating ineffective solutions, patronizing the poor, and kissing the arses of the rich and powerful. He has been generating and reproducing ways of seeking the developing world, especially Africa, that are no more than a slick mix of traditional missionary and commercial colonialism in which the poor world exists as a task for the rich world to compete. Couldn't agree well, more. Like, they've been raising money for Africa since 84. Yeah. Where the fuck is all that money gone? Because it sure as fuck isn't getting to Africa. Um, The drums they probably made the kid play. I'm betting. Um, so They were made it, from the height of recycled children of the corn yep um in this line of work bono has gladly rubbed shoulders with many of the most notorious individuals the world has to offer at the world bank he discussed poverty with paul wolfowitz one of the chief architects of the iraq war at the world economic forum he told rwanda genocidiary i think that's how you genocider. pronounce that genocider, genocider. sure i mean i just you got to make it sound as french as possible though you know like <laughs> Um, so Paul Kagami and the International Monetary Fund chief, Kristen Lagarde, that capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than any other ism. Indeed, it is hard to find a powerful figure with whom he has not joined forces. So, yay, capitalism. Woo! Capitalism um, has lifted more people out of poverty is the biggest fucking lie I've ever heard. Like, I flat out, right? Like, could you even say that with a straight face? Like, you know? No. Because like, China, just on its own, has lifted billions out of poverty. Right. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, very much so. I mean, so has, like, generally the USSR did for a minute as well. Until yep. we decided to apply economic sanctions and, you know. Well, that's the thing. They were on the right path. Yes. And then America decided to intervene because capitalism is so shitty. Yeah. They have to make everything else look bad by lying about it. I've got to I've got to curl my mustache up now. Like that's the rule. You can't have like two beards and one not be curled, you know. <laughs> um. So. So yeah, I mean, fucking this fucking article. So in 2013, he met with the Obamas in Dublin, acting as their tour guide. For years later, he was praising Vice President Mike Pence as a champion of humanitarianism in Africa. Other controversial. Does he even know what person he's talking about? No, no. Other controversial figures with whom he has been sure to be seen glad handing, including French President Emmanuel Macron and U.S. war planner Henry Kissinger. May he rest in hell. Yeah, on a street with no name, so no one can find him. Yep. Um. So, oh God, this picture. Um. That's Michael Bloomberg, right? Gordon Brown. Um, I imagine this is Henry Kissinger. Yeah. And this Kissinger. is Wilbur Ross, and this is Gordon Brown, Henry Kissinger, okay. and Bono. 
Um, so yeah. Have you guys your friends? Will be remembered as one of the worst plagues <clears throat> this world has ever seen. Yep. I mean, the World Economic Forum can just go, you know, fall off a cliff at this point. Oh, that whole group is pieces of garbage, too. Yes. And you notice the, the gender coming, spectrum though, and color spectrum of that picture is very similar. White. Yeah. As two white guys saying this. Um, yeah. And don't worry, as a white guy saying this, I'm not going to make a tweet like Jordan Sheridan talking about how any journalism somehow made me white, regardless I, of who I was. I'm only 98% white, oh. actually, so. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm just a mixture of white. I'm like, they took cream and, like, off-white, put that's, it together, you know. That's essentially what I am. I have Slavic roots, so yeah. that's yeah. why I look like a Neanderthal still. Yep. I have those old European hard looks. You know. My mom was like that too. Have you ever heard the the sound of a Neanderthal? Have you ever seen that? Yep. It was put up by the BBC. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. I sound like that. You know, every time I hear myself, I feel like it's you know You think you sound like it. In some cases have you heard my voice? <laughs> yeah, but yours is different. Like the, the actual Neanderthal sound that like the BBC made is like up here. Like I know it was like, and like no, no, pinch your focal cords up hard. Like it sounded like a fucking ridiculous animal. Anyway, F- follow um, me for more impressions. Right? <laughs> I feel like I feel like you just have to do every impression as if Barry White was doing that impression. <laughs> right? And like this is Barry White doing Christopher Walken. You know, <laughs> like whoa. Fucking <laughs> this super deep and shit. Um, so while claiming to care deeply about ending poverty, the Irish signature has consistently joined forces with many of the individuals and groups most responsible for keeping the world in a state of destitution. In 2005, he wrote the introduction to Jeffrey Sachs' book, The End of Poverty. An extremely influential economist, Sachs, more than almost anyone, was responsible for the collapse in living standards in 1990s Russia as it embraced an orgy of privatization and hyper-refined gangster capitalism that stripped away its formerly impressive social safety net. This led the country's population to shrink by 6.6 million between 1992 and 2006. Um, As millions died in the economic destruction, his advice to Bolivian dictator Hugo Banzer also resulted in a catastrophe that saw hyperinflation reach 14,000%. But also, many of Bolivia's wealthiest individuals increase their wealth. So Every time we inflation, the rich keep getting richer, but I'm told it's workers' wages. Mm. I hear that hyperinflation is as hyper as um, super delegates are super. So, you know, um, we could just not. I'm super. Thanks for asking. How about we just not? How about we just not? We could just not. People, we could just not. It is a construct. Everything's a construct. Um, Bono is also... No, we we need to break down into smaller governments now Mm. that work in... um, work together versus working against each other. I mean, I, I feel like for me, that whole... I mean, this goes back to the beginning of the American you know, um, political divide too, the Federalist versus Anti-Federalist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily agree that small government is better. I, I, I don't. I would like a competent government that can do the job wherever that is. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll agree like, with that. Like, you know, so, like, obviously to me, it's like the, the classic libertarian line is like, well, do you trust this government to do that? No, absolutely fucking not. Obviously. That's yeah. why we're building the fucking guillotine. Um, yeah. But. Like, uh, you know, I mean, I can't blame them for feeling that way, but generally you should be able to give them shelter, health, and happiness. That shouldn't be that hard. Um, Yeah, we should be able to beat the basic needs of everyone. Yeah. And then with basic needs met, most people will feel better enough to either go do another job or create another stream of income for themselves, making something they're good at. When you when you are out in the wild, like let's say you got thrown into the middle of like you know a, a survival situation, 
It's, you know, shelter, food, water. And the last thing on your mind is security. Yeah. Right. Until you absolutely need that as a, you know, part of your survival plan. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the last thing. So when we are still spending 70% of our budget and then some, you know, on military, like we should probably be rethinking our funding, you know, but Man, you guys spend more time, more money on cops than anyone mm -hmm. else does on military. Yep. Literally. And China's military is massive. Yes. Yeah. And it's pretty smart, you know? Oh, like, they have autonomous boats now. Yeah. Just like fully autonomous. Like, yep. Um, Their AI is like incredible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And they keep a lot of their stuff under wraps militarily. Um, well, yeah, because they know a state is trying to kill them. Yeah. So, yeah, cutting back on social programs that keep. So, Bono is also something a disciple of Lawrence Summers, the former chief economist at the World Bank and board member of Bono's One Campaign, a charitable organization that claims to be fighting extreme poverty and preventable illness in Africa. Like Sachs, Summers was one of the principal creators of the extreme inequality we see around the world today. While at the World Bank, he strong-armed countries in the global south into privatizing their assets and, al and allowing Western corporations to pillage their natural resources, all while drastically cutting back on social programs that kept hundreds of millions alive. Um, publicly, however, Summers is probably best known for the infamous Summers Memo, a letter he wrote while uh, leading the heading the World Bank, that argued that Western countries must be allowed to ditch their toxic waste on underpopulated countries in Africa. What the fuck? Um, this is the I fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard. Oh my god, I think the economic logic behind dumping a load of toxic waste in the lowest wage country is impeccable, he wrote. Hey guys, He's I have this idea. We're just going to take all the nuclear toxic waste and give it to brown people. That and places pretend like we're good. Los Angeles could not dump their traffic pollution on Africa as well. Um... Far from making him an outcast in celebrity philanthropy circles, Summers' position on the board of the Ones campaign serves as a vehicle through which much of Bono's activism is channeled. Holy shit, what the fuck is that? Um, headquartered on He's Pennsylvania just a Avenue. In the, uh, in the elite uh, circles. Destruction of the world. Yeah, I mean, he's a head fucking entertainer. Um, yep. headquartered on Pennsylvania Avenue, just two blocks from the White House, the One Campaign is an NGO juggernaut, receiving funding from many of the largest corporations in the world, including Bank of America, Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, and Google. It also works closely with other elite orgs like the Bill & Melinda Gates Foundation and the Open Society Foundations. Although its stated goals of reducing poverty and illness are laudable, it remains unclear how much it has contributed to this. After all, if we remove China from the statistics, global poverty reduction is going in the wrong direction. And while it claims to be a grassroots advocacy and campaigning organization, one glance at the company's board of directors suggests a different story. Um, so here's here's their board of directors, right? Um, we've David got... Cameron, what a piece of Oh, shit. I know, right? Uh, my... Bro, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna assume all these people are pieces. Pieces of, of it, yes. So, um, we've got Aliko Dengote, right? Um, so chief executive of the Dengote Industries Ltd. and chairman of the Dengote Foundation, uh, Bobby Shriver, co-founder One and Red, right? Um, of course, David Cameron. You see here, Bono, of course, Doctor ja Jackie Chim Chimahanzi. Um, Chief Executive Officer, African Leadership Institute, Dr. Mo Ibrahim, uh, Chairman Mo Ibrahim Foundation, Gail E. Smith, which, like, she's got to be fun at, at a casino, you know? Um, yeah. So, CEO of one. Um, Helen D. Gale, uh, President and the CEO of the Chicago Community Trust. I'm sure Kit Cabello and the boys probably have something to say about that. that. That sounds like a money laundering organization. Well, I mean, lots of things in Chicago do, but that's not its fault. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just um, Chicago. It's just Chicago. It's back home, boys. Um, so Jamie Drummond, co-founder one and sharing strategies, which I've heard that name before. 
Um, and Joe Sorrell, um, Managing Director, Global Policy and Advocacy, Europe, Middle East, East Asia, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So he's like, you know, um, their right hand man. Yes. He sounds like the, uh, what do they call that? Client side. Mm-hmm. Um, John Dewar, not to be confused with Deer, um, chairman at Kleiner Perkins, uh, Joshua Bolton, Kelly Ayote, Kevin Sheiky, Mimi Alamehu, uh, Morton H. Halperin, uh, Alexander Stubbs, which just looks like a fucking Ken doll of an individual. This is just basic, yeah. like, white guy. Um, they're just like, we need a white guy, and they're like, here's a picture. Right. Let's throw it up. Like, it looks like someone sculpted that out of cheese, you know? Um, Cheryl Sandberg and Susan A. Buffett um, from the Buffett Foundation. Um, Tom Preston. uh, Firefly. um, Firefly 3, specifically, I think, right? Um, MasterCard up here. um, Transnational Governance. That's this guy. And European University Institute. Um, Ocean so- Open Society Foundations. Right? Um, and Bloomberg over here. So, yeah. Couldn't be more, like, fucking shitty here. Um, definitely don't seem like humanitarians to me. So, one campaign is headed by Gail Smith, which is this lady. Right? Casino lady. Uh, the former head of U- y- y- oh shit USAID, right? Um, a U.S. governmental regime change organization that funds political and social groups across the world that align with U.S. interests. For example, um, USAID was instrumental in the attempt to topple the Cuban government last year, quietly funding, training, and supporting the anti-communist activists who led a failed color revolution. Also, on the ONE's campaign board of directors are former British Prime Minister David Cameron, the COO of Facebook, and a host of senior officials from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Open Society Foundations. The ONE Foundation strongly supported the New Alliance for Food Security and Nutrition, um, a Western-backed initiative whereby G8 countries agreed to give African states economic relief in exchange for opening up their nations to foreign agribusiness allowing massive land grabs and signing deals with agribusiness, agribusiness giants like Monsanto that will entrap them into permanent dependence on their GMO products. Woo! So, yeah, thoughts so far? Um, I cannot comprehend the depravity of these people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how you could be that evil. Yeah. Um, we got Jimmy Sinclair in the building. What's up, girl? Cliffhanger says Bono and Bill Gates have the same helping energy. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the crap about fucking um, that we can just take our like nuclear waste and give it to African countries. Like you're okay with that? I- I'm pretty sure that we do that with plastic in India now. Yeah. Yeah. I could clearly see that happening. Um, yeah. And then, like, so what their argument, of course, is like, oh, well, people can uh, do a job of sorting bottles. Like, yeah, that's that's what they need. Job sorting bottles. For mm, fuck's sakes. Ridiculous. So, um, like... So this is this is another aspect he's pulling out on Bono here. Um, embracing war criminals and rejecting Palestinians. Um, so YouTube, How anyone can look at what happens in Palestine and be like, no, Israel's the good guys here. I, I, I don't know who. I, I have no idea. I know um, who's the guy that uh, Sagar is friends with on um, the realignment. Marshall? Marshall somebody. Um, I want to say Kosloff. Um, but I don't think that's right. Um, you know, he, he was connected with the APAC lobby and stuff, right? Um, okay. And like both both him and Sagar, I think, are um alums from the Hudson Institute, which is like, you know, connected to APAC and 
it's, it's like a right wing neocon think tank. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, them, they'd probably see it that way. And in fact, they do. They, I think he said in a video that it would be amazing if they could just end the BDS movement. Um, so, uh, YouTube built their entire brand along around being an indie Andy war band with a social conscience. Indeed, they released an entire album called war to critical acclaim. The large majority of Bono's countrymen and women opposed the Iraq war. This was highly doubly true of his fan base. Yet by 2003, Bono had so deeply integrated himself into the corridors of power and was so intimately involved with the Bush and Blair administrations that the Iraq war posed a serious quandary. Do you sacrifice your credibility or your connections? In the end, he found a deeply unsatisfactory third way endorsing the leaders but stopping just short of an unqualified support for their war. Um, no, you support the leaders, you support the war. <clears throat> yep. Um, Warren wants to remind people that we are on Rockfin uh, now. Um, INN I just recently a got a Rockfin. Um, I think I have uh, sound bites with Warren. Where's that at? Um, Wash ass. <laughs> I think I just got kitty. I need to get wash your ass and you stupid poppy. Um, you know, but, um, yeah, Jimmy said Bernie tried to dump waste in, in the Texas town back in the nineties. Um, I wonder which Bernie she means. Um, but, uh, nuclear plants do that to American towns as well. The one in San Diego has been trying to bury waste in my mountains for years. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, well, look at the uh, oil in the Hawaiian islands. Right. I think NORAD is also partially a, a, a nuclear storage facility, um, if I remember correctly. Or like the other like building. There's like a couple mountains in there. So, you know. Um, but instead of turning it all into like g embedded glass that we can actually safely store... Um, on but that requires you to embed it into glass which in and of itself is not a renewable resource so on bush um so tony blair is not going to war for oil tony blair's sincere is in convictions about iraq in my opinion he is sincerely wrong we must not make a martyr of saddam hussein he is good at working the cameras he said this blatant falsehood framed the decision to go under war for oil as a strategic pr mistake helping a dictator rather than a crime um, so on Bush, Bono performed similar mental gymnastics. I'm all for President Bush trying to scare the shit out of Saddam Hussein, but you have to bring along the rest of the world. I support Bush and Blair all the way to the point where they go to war without the United Nations behind them. That is a mistake because that looks like the U.S. doesn't need to explain itself. He said again, offering limited opposition purely on the grounds that this might look bad. So, um, here he is at the World Economic Forum, right? So Bono, no, oh, Bill, um, that's Bill Gates, right? And uh, Thabo Mbeki, I think, okay. um, and Tony Blair. Um, so yeah, fun friends. Um, mm. Any, any hope that Bono might take any sort of true anti-war stance was quickly dashed when the next year he personally received Blair at his home in Dublin and then spoke at the Labour Party conference, where he described the Prime Minister and his Chancellor Gordon Brown as the John Lennon and Paul McCartney of global development. A close relationship blossomed on Blair's final day in office in 07. Bono offered his strongest endorsement of him yet, seemingly hinting at his support for the Iraq occupation, as well, stating what I admire most about Tony Blair is that he has almost all the time exposed himself to bad press and outcry for doing the things he believed in. The Iraq war is estimated to have killed up to 2.4 million people. Um, yeah, off what he believes in. So over time, the aging rocker also developed a close friendship with Bush. I become very fond of him. Underneath his armor, there's passion, compassion. He has it. He said, far from criticizing Bush or America, he claimed that Africa owes them a great debt of gratitude 
and that there are hundreds of thousands of Africans who owe their lives to the American government and his generosity. How stupid oh, is he? God, very fucking very is all I like, like. I couldn't even get through that sentence. Like, that is, might be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, like what? Like not not the thousands that we stole, enslaved, then murdered from that particular region, or all the ones we've let other white people kill and maim for resources. Yeah, just yeah, no. Oh, we owe their lives to the American. Yeah, dude, fuck you. Um, yeah, all those slaves we lost in the oceans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just those alone would probably like, you know, have a gigantic oh, millions, like, rap sheet. I believe that. Yeah. Um Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. So long after Bush retirement, Bono still met with the former president bidding his Texas ranch in 2017. A year later, Bono was the inaugural recipient of the George W. Bush Medal for Distinguished Leadership, which the Irishman described as a huge honor. Discussing their joint work on AIDS in Africa, Bono said that he wished to honor your leadership of the greatest health intervention in the history of medicine. Bush responded that he was impressed with Bono's knowledge. The first time I met you, you knew more statistics, like you were coming right out of the CIA, Bush said. Jesus Christ. Um, like, yeah. Um, this hearty and unnecessary endorsement of the two architects of the Iraq war did not go down well in indie music scenes. It also caused consternation inside you to itself. Larry Mullen, the band's drummer, has constantly refused to be part of these stunts, stating that Bono's friendship with war criminals like Bush and Blair makes him quote-unquote cringe. That's cringe? That's the strongest word you got there, guy? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, like, even the band knows. Yeah. Pretty much. So, but, what do you think actually happened when they loaded all that music onto iPhones? Um, I mean, a bunch of people deleted it from their right. iPhones, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but what was the goal of that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think Apple has always been like a big company similar to with like the Bill Gates situation. And like, they've always had their own foundations and things like that. So I'm sure, I'm sure they had very similar connections with, with Bono yeah. and like Bono would be like, well, you guys do music. We have like, we're like the best band, you know, like everyone likes us. You know, and I think I think Apple just decided, well, yeah, no one doesn't like you two, you know. Like it was just run of the mill. Well, that was wrong after. Yes, very much so. Um like but anyway, like Iraq, other excellent litmus tests of the credibility of any person, a group presenting themselves as a moral authority in their position on Palestine. Ireland has traditionally been a hotbed of support for Palestine, with the large majority of the country seeing parallels between the Israeli attempts to colonize and repopulate the land with Jewish settlers and the British occupation of Northern Ireland and its support of a pro-London Protestant faction. Um, Have especially you ever, among like, their back at like yes. what Britons did in Ireland. Yeah. Go watch go watch um The Wind That Shakes the Barley and uh okay. I want to say it's called Famine. Um, or not famine. Um, what is it when you like Gandhi used to do it? What are the, the, um, like food protests? What are those called where you don't eat? Um, I forget what those are called. Sorry. Um, what was the name of those two shows? When that shakes the barley. And I'm looking at the other one. It's, um, the well, Irish up, Reef. police. What the fuck, man? Oh God, you're taking forever. Faster, um, faster. Shit, I'm working on it. Prison. Um, Hunger is what it's called. The other movie. Um, Sorry, what was so that? So, Hunger, Hunger Strike. It's There's a movie called Hunger. 
So uh, you should go watch Hunger. That's one movie, right? And The Wind That Shakes the Barley. That's the other movie. Um, they're they're really fantastic. Um, Wind That Shakes the Barley first, and then Hunger. Hunger is about um the prison hunger strikes in Ireland, right when they were okay. locking up Irish. Um, yeah. And the Wind That Shakes the Barley is like the beginning of the IRA, pretty much. Um, and like how that all comes about and what the British were doing and what they had already been doing, you know, yeah. um, but yeah, I'm sure there's other great, great ones on the topic, but, um, well, people, it's, I find it funny because people always seem to like, um, want to dismiss what happened to the Irish people. And yeah. I'm like, that was like, they went through a lot of fucking shit. Like maybe mm-hmm. not as long, obviously as, uh, some Especially other here in, uh, in the people. states and yeah yeah but they suffered a huge amount of persecution in their own country and abroad when they came over too yeah well and and you know like the the they they outlawed the language and like you couldn't do so many things yeah. that like they outlawed field hockey for a while because that was like a way that the irish like you know um like essentially they would go out and teach kids how to fight that way yeah. you know um, but I mean, the IRA has always been, and, you know, I know people have taken that oath, um, you know, that like, they're, they're not happy with what the IRA is even doing right now. Cause they, yeah. they essentially support the thing that they used to fight. It's like every other, you know, group now, yeah. um, it gets taken over. And yeah. Infiltrated. Um, so yeah. Uh, Patty McGinnis is having crumpets with the queen and shit. Um, yeah. so British occupation of Northern Ireland, right? So yet you two has gone against the grain is one of the few Irish bands of any note to break BDS and play gigs in Israel. Bono himself is a disciple of Israeli president, Shimon Perez, describing himself as his admirer at a gig in Toronto. He dedicated a song to him, addressing him directly and stating, we understand president Perez that you have tried to be the voice of reason and you've dedicated a lot of your life to try and bring peace in this really dangerous region. This assessment might be news to the families of the people Perez ordered killed in multiple massacres he oversaw. Bono also attended Perez's 90th birthday celebrations. Yet, while Bono love bombs Israel war, Israeli war criminals, he rejects Palestinians as people filled with rage and despair. In a New York Times op-ed, he insisted that they must Find among them their Gandhi, their Martin Luther King, their Aung San Suu Kyi. Thus, like others, he intentionally ignores decades of nonviolent Palestinian struggle, instead maintaining they rise to the standard of fairy tale versions of individuals who were not nearly as anti-violence as Western whitewashers wish they were. So, yeah. Okay, so um, he's just denying genocide. So he's an absolute yes. human. And, and totally. A waste of yeah you know you shouldn't throw rocks at the people raping and killing your women and children you should you know hug them instead um like how can people look back and be like okay palestine was this big and then they had all their land taken away oh yeah yeah, they are definitely the aggressors yeah uh human love solidarity the irish gained political power in local elections to gain power i mean yes and no i mean they tried it didn't always work out that way. You know, like now, if you're going to try to get elections to happen, you know, they, they don't necessarily, like, work as cleanly as you want them to. So the Irish also had a strong arm to get what they wanted then, too. There's a reason why they had the people with the guns and the explosives. Um, you know, and then you start getting into the black and tans and stuff like that, who were, uh, you know like essentially conscripted in Ireland to fight on British behalf. Right. So they are essentially Irish traitors and stuff like that. Um, thus the song come out, ye black and tans. Um, Uh, yeah. Um, you can pretty much learn most of this through like the Dubliners soundtracks. Um, like they're just go through the discography. It's pretty much, you know, they'll talk about everything that the British have ever done or said to the Irish. Um, but yeah, um, Angela Sangster did say the wind that shakes the barley was really good. Yeah, and that that and hunger. I think hunger is fast bender. Um, and like it's uh, there's a scene in it that's like classic, 
they essentially um they had I'm trying to look for the uh two cast cast. Um can I find that easily? Yes. Um cast. Yeah, okay. So they had um Michael Fassbander and like I think it's Stuart Graham in there. I'm trying to remember. There's the um oh no, Liam Cunningham. Right? There's a scene between him and like the prison priest. And Liam and Fassbender lived in the same apartment while filming this whole like film. Right. And they practice that scene over and over and over and over until like that scene's palpable. You can feel that shit. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, in the same op-ed, Bono presented Barack Obama as a modern day Martin Luther King, despite the fact that the Obama administration continued Bush wars and would go on to bomb seven countries simultaneously. He also called for regime change in Iran, North Korea, and Myanmar, saluting these protesters as brave heroes who continued to take to the streets to bite the certainty of brutal repression. He would get his wish in Myanmar, where Aung San Suu Kyi would come to power and preside over a genocide of tens of thousands of Rohingya Muslims. Um, which he was talking about her in the likes of Gandhi and stuff earlier, right? Or him or whoever. Um, it's funny, they always have problems. They don't have problems when it's their people murdering Muslims. Yes. Yeah, as long as it's theirs. You know, I mean, we've been doing it for years, so. Um, so, McLeod wants to also focus on his, his business a little bit. Um, so, an attempt to foster a vibrant art scene, Ireland has extremely generous tax laws for those working in the creative industries. With no artists or musicians in the country paying any income tax whatsoever on royalties below 250000 a year. Yet, you 2 still decided in 06 to move their money offshore into tax havens. The fact that an individual who styles himself the champion of the global poor was avoiding paying taxes on, a, on his reported $700 million fortune led to widespread protests. U2's performance at the Glastonbury Festival in England in 2011 was upstaged by huge banners in the crowd highlighting the absurdity of tax-avoiding charlatans lecturing the poor on global justice. Commenting on the affair, Bono said that Smart people should be sensible about the way they are taxed. U2's lead guitarist, David Evans, who insisted upon being called The Edge, claimed that it was ridiculous that people were making a big deal about it. Bono himself would later be named in the Paradise Papers, a leak of documents hinting at the level of tax avoidance from the world's super wealthy elite. And I'm sure he came up in the Panama stuff too, right? Um, yeah, so he's clearly in with them. Yes. So Ireland's economy fell into terminal decline after the 08 financial crisis. It's fictitious finance bubble burst, causing old told harm to millions. The ultra low tax regime encouraged corporations around the world to relocate to Dublin, driving up property values and gentrification to absurd levels and stealing a future from the millennial and Zoomer generations. Yet in 2014, Bono caused outrage by insisting that the unsustainable hyper capitalist program, successive government, uh, pursued, bought Ireland the only prosperity we've ever known. Many might ask, prosperity for whom? You two are arch capitalists. They don't seem like it, but they are, said the band's promoter, Jim Eichen. That's their promoter, man. Um, this do as I say, not as I do preaching is a key reason Bono is one of the most disliked men in his home country. You two is one of Ireland's most recognizable export. Yet fears of hypocritical faux activism have soured many of Bono's country folk against him. Brown writes that a common story among Dubliners is to tell their friends, I saw Bono in town today, but I pretended not to recognize him. Um, I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. Adding to this pretentious air is Bono's ex uh, insistence on wearing sunglasses at all times. Even indoors, he has stated that he has a medical condition that, nece that necessitates it. Um, this may well be the case. However, it is remarkable how the condition appears to afflict celebrities far more than the general population. Um, Bono has built up a considerable business empire, including the purchase of a large Dublin hotel and shopping center in a Lithuanian owned through shell through a shell company based in an ultra low tax Malta. Um, the center reportedly has paid no tax in Lithuania, which is why it's been a 
fucking ridiculous like mafia fucking country. Despite making a profit, he has also found a private equity firm in 04 that invests in creative industries. Through his this firm, he produced Mercenaries 2, a video game in which the object is to invade Venezuela and overthrow a powerful, hungry tyrant who has seized control of the country and its oil supply. The game was featured blatant pro-U.S. propaganda was clearly depicting a coup against President Hugo Chavez, something which Bono's friend Bush attempted multiple times. USAID um, provided the funding and the training to the failed coup plotters. Therefore, from Iraq to Palestine to Iran and Venezuela, Bono has always stood shoulder to shoulder with the world's powerful, attacking their enemies and shielding them from criticism. It is one thing to ruthlessly murder and starve millions. Many in Washington and London do that. It is quite something else to cheerlead this process while signing your own praises and presenting yourself as a modern day saint. And it is perhaps precisely this messiah complex that has irked so many and made him such a controversial individual. Bono presents himself as a radical activist, ruffling feathers and standing up for the world's oppressed. In reality, he has not done or said anything in decades that discomforts the political and economic rulers of the world, which is precisely why he is constantly invited into the halls of power. Bono is not a threat to the empire, he is its smiling, singing face. Thus, if Bono is speaking truth to power, he is so close to it that he could whisper. And power likes what it hears from him. As Brown said, does Bono's work serve the purpose of some of those who seek financial and ideological domination over the poor world and the rich world alike, and whose interests differ profoundly from those of the majority of us? He may not know the answer himself, but we had better. So, overall thoughts? Um, I just flabbergasted by how much of a piece of shit he is now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like he clearly is quite versed in what is going on. And um, so, uh, yep. hopefully he'll be held responsible for his words and actions. And shout out for Alan McLeod for eviscerating the man. Um, nice of you to do that. 